campaign was initiated by Mochran Affirma because I suppose during the boom in Ireland, a lot of people had lost the sense of community and lost that sense of neighborliness, which Ireland has been renowned for across the world. In an effort to combat that, this campaign was started where a weekend would be set aside for, to encourage communities to organize events and to just break the ice in getting to know their neighbors, particularly new people who might have moved in. Such an initiative would never have gotten off the ground if we hadn't been generously supported by ESB. And I'm delighted to welcome here to this evening um, Padraig McManus, the Chief Executive of the ESB Group, um, and Reid Horn, the Executive Director of Energy Solutions, and several other very important people from the ESB. And I'm not saying that lightly, without their support and assistance, the campaign would not happen. So you're very welcome. I'm delighted to welcome the National President of Mochran Affirma, Mr. Michael Going. And I'm delighted to welcome um, Marie O'Callaghan from RTE, who has very kindly come here this evening to chair a panel discussion, which we will have later on. Right, neighbours, let's just start. I'm actually going to cross, go across the floor. You, Eamon, you've taken that microphone. Does that mean you think I'm going to ask you to speak first? I, I hope not. Yes. <laughs> well, since you have the microphone, I am. <laughs> no, just to, to be honest, you know when people talk about neighbours and stuff, I suppose the theme is neighbours, who cares? What do you think about neighbours, who cares? Do you? Mary, I'm more of a home and away man myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, That's a good joke. <laughs> not. Uh, who, who cares? Well, I, I think that, that mo most people, in fact, do care. Um, I think over the past number of years, people, it, it dropped down the list of priorities. People became cash rich and time poor. But um, there's always been a case that people have wanted to be good neighbours. Um, but the, the problem is, that I think, over time, people have become kind of uh, lost the skills nearly needed to become a, a good neighbour. And that the people are kind of becoming unaware of the, the protocol or the etiquette of being a, a good neighbour and kind of afraid of, of stepping on people's toes. Um, whereas uh, I think before people were, were, were less worried about such things and just got on and, and got to know their neighbours. And that's something that we need to go back to. We need to be less shy, be a bit more uh, brazen and, and, and just get to know our neighbours, I think. Irene, from your point of view, I mean, is it because everyone got caught up in the so-called Celtic Tiger and they became more selfish, more obsessed with themselves. Yeah, definitely. I think the way society was kind of training us, even through college, it was training us to be selfish, to be introverted, to only think about yourself because you're like, oh, I have exams to do, I can't go out and talk to people. And then you realise that in the stressful times, there is nowhere to turn. And in fact, you have to turn to other people. You know, there's you know, only so many phone calls you can make to all these helplines and so many internet sites. But at the end of the day, the personal touch is what really matters. And, you know, okay, we're in a time of recession, but maybe it might be one of the best things to happen for actually our own community spirit. That's what I think, anyway. So I, I know one man who, whose mother who was in her late 80s, and she lives here in Dublin. And according to him, she can be as lonely as hell, simply because in the street she lives, no one else is there in the daytime either. Yeah. And it really is. So it's not just the neighbourhood in mm. rural villages or areas. Sometimes in an estate, you would imagine it should, would, should be perfect. That can be lonely as well. And really, the message really is not just getting involved in the community, which is what people should do, but it's even if you're not involved, it's saying, who do I know on this road? And do I know them? And are they, are they living alone? Are they likely maybe... So if I just said hello to them, would it work? And the amazing thing is, yes, the odd person will tell you, oh, look, get lost, you're looking for news or something. But most people like to smile and they like to be spoken to. Mm -hmm. And it's in those small instances. So it's not that you have to get involved in an organization. That's fine, and it's good, and you should. But do you know your own neighbor? Do you know who lives up the road from you? Have you ever said, listen, do you want to live somewhere? Or, listen, I'm going the way, do you need a newspaper? You know, it's yeah. really basic oh, stuff. Oh, I, and, and um, I live in Deeds Great <coughs> in a small estate, and um, we didn't know our neighbours. I knew a 
five neighbours out of 37. And um, I was at the bus stop one morning, getting the first fix A in with another neighbour, and I said to her, isn't it terrible we don't know? And I said, Christmas is coming up, and the 2nd of January was a Friday. I said, why don't we ask the neighbours up to my house for a glass of wine at 7 o'clock? And we hand wrote a note. We got from the Residents Association the names, and we hand wrote a note to all of them. And I thought maybe 15 people would turn up. We got 50 on the night. They came at seven and at one o'clock in the morning, I was saying, please, you have to go home. <laughs> you have to go home. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. And it was very simple. And, and just the handwritten note made all the and difference. And did you stay then friends after that? Did you well, find me the But now everybody waves going up and down the street and they know each other and, you know, the cars and they stop at the bus stop. 